Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and uh, we are back again with oral pathology series and this video is all about odontogenic cysts. Okay, the contents of this video are, I'm going to be uh, discussing a couple of uh, odontogenic cysts and a couple of non-odontogenic cysts which are important from exam point of view. Okay. First cyst that we are going to be discussing today would be radicular cyst. Okay, so this is the most common type of odontogenic cyst seen in the oral cavity. Most common. Okay, so this cyst is also known as periapical cyst. So this cyst is associated with a with tooth which has caries involvement, and then um, there is palpal infection which ultimately lead to periapical infection and forms periapical cyst okay this cyst occurs when this infection from the pulp goes and reacts with the remnants of her twigs epithelial root sheath in the periodontal ligament okay and these cells are called as epithelial cell risks of malices so these cells react with the infection and ultimately leads to the formation of periapical cyst Okay, so the treatment for this periapical cyst would be option one, root canal treatment can be done followed with followed by episectomy or extraction can, can be done followed by cure attachment. Okay, the next cyst that we're going to be talking about would be dentigerous cyst. This is the second most common type of cyst. The first com most common is the radicular cyst and the second most common type is dentigerous cyst. The unique feature um, about a dentigerous cyst is this cyst is always associated with an unerupted tooth. Okay, and this cyst forms usually 90% from the CEJ. It covers from CEJ from this mesial side to CEJ of distal side. That's how this cyst usually forms. Okay. So, how this cyst is formed is um, during eruption, the tooth is covered with something called as reduced enamel epithelium. Uh, when a fluid accumulates in between the tooth and the reduced enamel epithelium, uh, this type of cyst forms. Okay. This type of dentigerous cyst forms. So this cyst lining is usually attached with CJ of the tooth which I mentioned earlier. So this type of cyst is most commonly seen in canines and third molars. Okay. The adequate treatment for this type of cyst would be enucleation of cyst. There are three variations in this type of cyst. The first one is central type. Okay. Which means it covers from mesial of CJ to distal of CJ. This Example is central type. So, this type of um, dentigerous is called lateral type, where it covers only one side of the tooth. Okay. Another type of dentigerous is, is called a circumferential, which covers the entire tooth surface. Okay. So, these three types you need to remember. Um, the treatment for this cyst would be enucleation of the cyst along with the unerupted uh, too. So the next cyst we are going to be talking about would be keratocystic odontogenic tumor. Okay, so this cyst was earlier called as odontogenic keratocyst. But right now, this terminology has been eliminated and is termed as keratocystic odontogenic tumor. Okay, so this cyst can be, uh, okay, this tumor can be uh, either unilocular or multilocular radiolucency. Previously, we saw dentigerous cyst, which is always a unilocular radiolucency, which means there's only one locule, okay? But in uh, keratocystic odontogenic tumor, you can have multiple lo locules as well, okay? So this type of tumor most commonly affects the posterior region of maxilla or mandible. Um, the unique feature of this keratocystic odontogenic tumor is recurrence rate is very, very high and it is associated with something called as Gordlin syndrome. So, this Gordlin syndrome um, has uh, associated association with keratocystic odontogenic tumor, basal cell carcinoma, bifid drips, palmar or plantar pits, epidermal cysts, fibromas, lipomas, calcification of Parkes cerebri. So the adequate treatment for keratocystic odontogenic tumor is enucleation with extraction of the tooth if the cyst is small. If the cyst is bigger, 
bigger in size, then you need to do something called as marsupialization, wherein you don't remove the entire lining, but you, you remove 90% of the cyst and leave the 10% which is close to the vital structures. For example, a nerve or an artery is involved. You don't touch that area. Okay. So, in Gordon syndrome, this picture shows an adequate example of Gordon syndrome where the right side of the jaw of this child is enlarged. Okay. Because uh, this child has keratocystic odontogenic tumor on the right side. And uh, uh, so, this Gordon syndrome is associated with basal cell carcinoma like you see in this picture and uh, bifid ribs where the ribs are split into two and multiple keratocystic odontogenic tumors. This Gordon syndrome is very important from exam point of view. Okay. The next cyst that we're going to be talking about would be eruption cyst. Eruption cyst is usually associated with uh, unerupted tooth. Okay, so it appears smooth, reddish or bluish pink on the alveolar ridge. So for this, this no treatment is required. It's usually burst when the tooth erupts by itself. Okay, so if the parent or the child is complaining about this cyst, then we can excise this cyst and let the tooth erupt. The next cyst would, that we're going to be discussing would be lateral periodontal cyst. So, this type of cyst usually occurs in between the premolars. Okay. So, you'll have extraoral enlargement and in uh, radiograph, you will notice a radiolucency in between two premolars. These are usually asymptomatic and they do not cause any problems. But um, if they give any symptoms and if they give any enlargement, then you can do, then you can excise the cyst. Okay, so if this type of cyst which occurs in gingiva, when you have a gingival swelling, but in radiograph you don't have any symptoms, then that is called as radio, uh, gingival cyst. Moving on to the soft tissue, which is cyst of non-odontogenic origin. Um, this is uh, this is one type of cyst which is called as nasolabial cyst, which usually occurs the, in the upper lip. Females are more commonly affected than males. This type of cyst is a soft tissue cyst. So, you, you cannot see any uh, radiographical changes. The adequate treatment would be uh, excision of this cyst. So, in this picture, if you notice, um, based on the location of the cyst, um, names are given. Uh, when nasolabial, which, which occurs in the soft tissue, which occurs in the lip usually. Okay, nasopalatine means it usually occurs in the incisive canal area, usually occurs due to remnants of incisive canal which occurs in the hard palate, most common and it is heart shaped. Median palatal cyst is very very rare and it occurs in the midline of the heart palate. As I mentioned before, nasopalatine cyst, this occurs due to remnants of the incisive canal in the heart palate okay so this is the typical heart shaped radiolucency very important to remember heart shaped radi radiolucency in the palate okay so in this type of cyst all the teeth are vital okay so this type of cyst is normal until um, 6 mm of growth okay if the cyst is more than 6 mm then a biopsy needs to be done uh, in order to check for carcinoma if there is any dysplastic changes to nose any malignant lesions, okay, the adequate treatment would be excision of the cyst. Next cyst that we're going to be seeing is globulomaxillary cyst. This cyst usually occurs in between maxillary lateral incisor and canine. So, this cyst is pear shaped, okay. So, even in this cyst, the, all, all of the teeth are vital and the adequate treatment would be excision of the cyst. Okay, so the last but not the least, we are going to be seeing something called as Epstein pearls and bones nodules. Uh, these are also important when, when it comes to exam point of view. So, the, this Epstein, both the cyst occurs in newborns, okay, in infants. So, Epstein pearls are type of cyst which occurs in between uh, mid-palatine raphe. Okay, so bones nodule occurs lateral to the heart palate or in the junction between heart palate and soft palate. You need to remember the location. Based on the location, you will be able to differentiate. If it occurs in the midline, it's Epstein pearls. 
if it occurs lateral to the heart pellet or junction between heart and soft pellet, it's called as bones nodules. Okay. So that's all about odontogenesis, guys. I hope you uh, guys found it useful. Uh, good luck to you guys. Please drop a like if you guys like the video and please subscribe to my channel if you're new to get all the latest updates from my channel. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.